Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to Hardly a Podcast, episode 13, uh, the unlucky episode. I think Nosh is just currently throwing around a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm Jamie, and with me today, as always, is Nosh and Simon. Hello. Hello, I just finished eating those m ms in time there. That <laughs> was a race against the clock. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so cool. We're all here. We're relatively on time. I say relatively on time. We're about three hours late now. And I don't know. It feels like I've only been up for about five hours. Yeah. Although, to be fair, you probably have. Um, well, I know Nosh has. It's about I think, 11. I think Nosh woke up at about, what, three in the afternoon? Half past three. Oh, <laughs> it's because he's staying up late tonight to watch um, the, the MLG Pro League. Wow. Yeah. That's oh, some Nosh. dedication, Nosh. You're watching the Spring Championship. Sit there and watch StarCraft and whatever well, else it is MLG does. League of Legends, nowadays. Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur. See, I remember, when all, I remember when all they did was Halo. Well, that's they all started off with Halo. Well, I, I remember that's... Well, when I when they showed up on my radar, that's all oh, they ever, they ever cared about. So they always just like web-streamed Halo 3 and stuff. Mm-hmm. They probably started out with other stuff. Yeah, the problem start with StarCraft. But I think, <laughs> at, I think at one point, all these sort of strategy games were sort of at a lull, and all they all they ever played was just Halo 3. But it was cool if you liked Halo 3. Yeah. I think it's currently CLG 1, Team Solo Mid 1. I don't know <laughs> who any of those people are from Adam. Oh, okay. Teams. Anyway, uh, this past week... Has been E3, one of the uh, the most exciting E3s I think I've ever had the pleasure to sit through. And That's so we're going to talk about it for quite a while, which is going to be fun. Nosh has prepared himself. He's uh, he's hucked himself about a packet and a half of sleeping tablets. He's now at the whiskey. It's not a bad idea, actually. I think my face just then said what I thought of E3. Yeah, we really weren't very enthusiastic, but then again, I don't think we really were expecting that much anyway. I think our reaction was about the same as most people, who either watched it or went to it. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> Although, yeah. to be fair, it was, more, it was more impressive than I thought it was going to be, but it was far from anything that I would call remotely exciting. It's all razzmatazz, no substance. Wow. <laughs> you were waiting to use that word, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. It's true. Well, they showed you lots of pretty pictures, but didn't tell you anything interesting. Or There's you. nice singers as well there. Well, ladies, just so you know, Nosh is single. So if you do like a lot of razzmatazz but no substance, give us an email at hardlyachannel at wildmail.com and we'll hook you up. And the I talk about the substance and no razzmatazz for me. <laughs> it's just as bad. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> wow. But where's the substance? Isn't it neither then, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I think we should we should probably talk about E3, seeing as it is E3 after all. And we spent time. And we spent actually time possible. actually looking into it, so we'll... Uh... I want my motherfucking time back. That <sighs> Nintendo conference was so was boring. terrible. That was far from the Nintendo conferences I remember seeing. I didn't watch it. No, I know you didn't. Did you watch any of it? Yeah, I watched some of them. But I think we'll sort of go through... Pick out the bits that we thought were exciting and talk about them. The stuff that wasn't totally boring, rather than exciting, is how, what I would say. There was a couple of fun things that I thought were interesting. Yeah, there was nothing that was like pant wettingly good, where I was no, just overcome with excitement. You're not going to see that until E3 2013, E3 2014, probably yeah. 2014 to be fair, when the when the new consoles are on our doorstep. I thought they were coming out more like 2013. Yeah, it'll probably be holiday 2014, judging by the cycles. So you're saying it would be basically 2015? Yeah. No, it'll be next Christmas. No. That's what I've been reading. I put £5 on it. Yeah. 
Xbox will be on time. PlayStation will be delayed. <laughs> I put five pounds on that as well. well no, actually, because I agree with you. <laughs> it won't be another but, well I two mean, and a half years. I don't know because I I kind of think unless uh, the Connect and unless this Xbox Smart Glass are also going to work on the next Xbox, it really seems silly for them to be have dumped so much money into it and only have gotten two, three years of use out of it. I can't imagine that they would be so stupid as to make something specifically for a console that was at the well, end. Let's of face it, life. they were stupid enough to make Connect in the first place. People so. like Connect. I know you do. Who? Who likes Connect? It's like, well, do you remember the people iPod who like playing Just you. Dance and shouting at their TV? They like Connect. I'd like to play if it was drunk. Just dance. Well, do you remember the eye toy for the um, PlayStation Two? Yeah, that was a load of shit. And the, Sony, uh, Microsoft must have thought, "Ah, oh, we'll make one of those." They were good. Yeah, and then they thought, "Oh, this went well. We'll just repackage it and call it the PlayStation Move." The Connect shit, just like the eye toy was. Basically, to win in a game on the eye toy, you just walk towards it because then you just filled the screen. Oh, look, I've done it. <laughs> oh, good old days, <laughs> and it was only ever used with the eye toy bundle stuff really or oh, unless you want to talk load your face into like a game mm. oh yeah take pictures so you have like, mm. a picture on your driving license for driving games and things I don't remember that but yeah I remember using it to upload my face onto FIFA every time you got arrested in a driving game it would just take a mug shot of whatever happened to be in front of the camera at the time <laughs> anyway E3 anyway, yeah, no, we should we should we should probably go through E3 on the whole we're not really impressed with but uh, Simon pick pick out one or two things that you actually like the look of but if they gave us tickets we'd go oh totally we'd, we'd take their money if they gave us tickets and a flight to Los Angeles we'd go and we'd say it was the best show we'd ever fucking seen we'd, we'd just tell them how amazeballs it was but and then off ca- when we did our own piece to camera we'd just say how shit it was no no because then we probably wouldn't get the money again We've got to find the cool developer party to go to and stuff. Uh, anyway, games that I actually liked. Yeah. Um, South Park, The Stick of Truth. Yep. Even part. though I missed the Microsoft press conference. Um, I watched it later on YouTube. That was it from Microsoft for me. Oh, Forza, I guess. But things that I actually liked. Um, Beyond Two Souls, because it's by the people who made Heavy Rain, and Heavy Rain is amazing. And Watch Dogs, which everyone seemed to like, really. Mm. Oh, and Dishonored, which was shown later. They were my favourite. What was that? Three things? Four things? Yeah, that was that was a surprisingly brief. I was expecting it to It was go my to top a... my top three of the crap things for me three. South Park, <laughs> Beyond Two Souls, and Dishonored. <laughs> Fair enough. So when you say Beyond Two Souls is from the Heavy Rain guys, is it... Mm-hmm. Is it basically the same game as Heavy Rain? It's or... not a sequel or anything, but it's no, the same no, no, style. No, I don't mean like yeah. LinkedIn. I mean, has it got the sort of the same control mechanisms? Has it got? Is it basically just quick time events? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, probably anyway. <laughs> Do you actually know? I haven't seen any gameplay footage from it really, but it's by the people who did Heavy Rain, so I imagine it's going to be pretty similar to Heavy Rain. Fair enough. I see no reason for them to change it. It was a good farmer. I liked that game. Cool, cool. Uh, South Park and the whole minute and a half they showed of it. It looks just like the TV show. It'll be amazing. Yeah. Well, that's what they said. They said they wanted to make it look exactly like the TV show. Mm. And then they talked about fridges for a bit and then they left. Yeah. It looks great. Can't wait to play it. Hope it's really good. Well, looking at it and looking at some of the video, it looks sort of like a cross between an old-style 2D platforming game, and some elements of it looked a bit like a turn-based RPG-type thing, where you had like the enemies on one side of the screen and your guys on the other. And then every so often you pick an attack, and one of them would sort of run forward, do the attack, and then run back again. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I, I'm only getting this information from sort of like two-second clips of video mashed together, but that's what it looked like to me. Wait and see. I didn't see enough of it, really. I just know it's a South Park game, and I want it. 
fair enough. Um, what about you, Nosh? What stuff caught your eye? Black Ops 2. Wow. Which Terrible. I know you two won't want or like. Because... Terrible. Well, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying it's nothing I haven't seen before. Well, that's and, what the people know, like. Things things get boring. you got to, you know, spice it up every now and again. you got to, you know, add things to it. Or otherwise, think... otherwise you're just essentially playing the same game you played four years ago. It's not really changed much since COD 4? Was that the first Modern Warfare one? Yes. They're all pretty much the same, just with slightly different plots. There's been no real innovation in the series. Yeah, and it, and the plots are the least important thing, because it's the only people reason people buy these games is for the multiplayer. It's kind of like, another example would be like Gran Turismo. You could probably pick up the first one for the PlayStation 1, and it's essentially the same as the one for the PlayStation 3. But they don't pump like those games. out as often. Mm. Would you agree games like FIFA, where they just stick another number on every year, is essentially the same thing? Yeah, they, yeah. they well, yes. But... Essentially, but at least they do show some innovation. Yeah. Although saying that, the uh, the EA Sports video this year, the thing seemed to be, oh look, you can nudge the guy you're trying to tackle. Mm. And they seem to show like several action shots of these people tackling each other, one person just keeps nudging him. So, but yeah, essentially it is the same game and there's no point buying one if you've got one that's five years old. Uh, people will still buy. Yeah, yeah but people are really nice idiots, so. I like the look of it. It looked different to some of the other ones. Is this the one where it's kind of set in the future a bit more and they it's have like weird robots, robots and shit? It's got yeah. That did kind of it. look quite... It did look better. I like... At least think... trying to make the plot more central to it rather than... Well, it looks like they are. Trying to make more of a story out of a yeah. single player. The story sounds intriguing, and if they have a bit more than just the average six to eight hour single player that they tack onto the side of the multiplayer game, then it would be good. I imagine the multiplayer is still good, which I mean, is why people will buy it as one, well. One thing I liked the look of, though, um, and this is a gameplay element, this is actually something that is crucial to your experience of it, is that when you look down the sniper rifle, you can actually charge up the sniper the sniper shot. Um, oh, yeah, that was good. And if you charge it up enough, it can like shoot through walls and things. Oh, okay. And I thought, yeah, that actually <laughs> is something we've never seen before, really. Also, you get like looks like there's more options in Black Ops Two rather than just like a linear. Yeah, like go from this in, point to this instead point. Instead of having this, this. a waypoint, and you've got to make it to the waypoint. When you get there, there are like several different options, like. You can sit here and snipe, or you can rappel down and fight them on the ground. It did seem to so you could do multiple playthroughs from different angles and stuff if you want yeah. to be a sniper or a tank and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. But for a game that really does uh, sort of adapt it, adaptation by, as you go through it in terms of the story and the characters, a um, much better game for that was... I've lost this. The Last of Us, which looks really of us good. Last looked amazing from the Sony got, press conference. Yeah, like really realistic, intelligent AI elements to it. Is I mean, that by Naughty Dog? Yes. Yes. Yeah, because the main character in it just looks like an old version of is it Drake? Drake. Yeah, yeah. From Drake's fortune. <laughs> <laughs> from I saw that as well, but it does look really good. Apparently, they really worked on the AI and stuff, so it's a lot more complicated. Mm. Yeah, um, that does look good. They think it's... a lot better. As you go through and stuff, so like groups of enemies isn't just one entity; it's individuals, and so they react differently. And they will, if they see you, they will identify where you are exactly, tell everybody else. They can coordinate different attacks against you, and they'll say, "I just saw such and such with a gun in that doorway," so they know exactly where you are. So you can't just sneak past an entire group if you're spotted by one person and such things. It's not sort of just like quick time events or. And the person you're with, the little girl, she will help you or not, depending on how safe it is for her. Mm. Uh, they talk about the one point where you, some guy gets you in a like, headlock and is trying to kill you. And quite often she comes in and stabs people with her butterfly knife she's got. But because they're in like, a corridor with windows where the people are looking in, she can't come and help you because she'd get shot. So all the, those times in games where you think, they just wouldn't do that because you'd get shot or that's stupid. Or all they the times they do get shot. Like yeah. your, your AI companions that are invincible. 
It sounds yeah. like a happy medium between the invincible ones and the god awful escort person in um, Resident Evil Four. The stupid is it the president's daughter, and she does nothing but run in front of bullet fire and die, <laughs> and that means you fail the level. Yes. It is, however, a PS3 exclusive, so it's yeah, not Naughty Dog games generally are. Mm. Yeah, but that does look really good. Yeah, that does. Uh, what else did I like the look of? Uh, I'd be interested to see how the, the new Splinter Cell plays out because I've enjoyed some of the other, the older ones of that. They were really good to play, especially like when you had co-op elements to them. Mm. It did look fun. One of the things I didn't like about it was the uh, the connect stuff that just looked like a, a blatant tack onto the side of it. It probably is because you won't have to use it, obviously. Well, well, I hope not. <laughs> nah, I doubt they'll do that. Although, seriously, hump of the game. Although saying that, it sort of did things that you can't imagine being recreated with buttons, which in a way is good. But in a way it wasn't so good. Like, uh, for example, if you're like hidden around a corner and there's mm. an enemy guy patrolling, you could just sort of whisper into the connector and you could be like, psst, psst, over here. And the guy sort of goes to check out where the sound came from and you can jump him. So you can sort of use okay. it to make a guy come up to you. And you can also use it to say, command in airstrikes and things. Like if you radio back to base and you know request an airstrike, but it just those people who like more of immersive bits of their gaming would like yeah, to beat that, that but actual person. I, I would just, I would like to it. think that the majority of society feels stupid yelling at its telly. No, no, I do it all the time. Yeah, like yelling at the PC. That's connect, no connect, webcamming or whatever. Wow, fair enough. Yeah. I generally don't have a microphone or whatever plugged in when I'm playing, say, the PS3 or whatever, just so people can't hear me when I'm just going then, on a massive then again, tirade. Then again, th- now I've just said that, thinking about it, we do have a hobby where essentially what we do is sit in a room on our own and talk to a computer. Yeah. And then put it up for everyone to see. So, oh well. And, do, and when I play League of Legends with Nosh, in when, I'll just shout at the screen quite a lot. But he can generally hear me from yeah, his that's just That's because of how yeah, I don't really need a microphone. No. <laughs> it's better when there's five of us. Because that's worked really well, actually, when we've had five of us on playing with a microphone. Or with yeah, using four the microphone people yelling at Nosh and Nosh going, I've not done anything! Generally. I sometimes feel it's unnecessary, the shouting. <laughs> sometimes wow. it is. Nosh, 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 this, is, this isn't a counselling session. We don't give a crap. Uh, you can keep on being as disgruntled as you like. I'll go release that hornet, then you'll be sorry. <laughs> so you got a oh, third game cool. to talk about, Nosh? Uh, there was... At least you got Watch, Watch Dogs, which everybody who watched the trailer seems to have yeah. thought was amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, there's Assassin's that, Creed 3 as well. I like saying it. that, everyone who watched the Dead Island trailer, the first one, thought it was amazing. And everyone thought the game was going to be kind of like... Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> bless you, Nosh. I could just see in the webcam he was lining up for another one. No, every, when everyone saw that, the very first trailer for Dead Island, everyone thought it would be a game that's a lot like The Last of Us, where it sort of explores oh. the relationships between the people who are left behind and sort of be a bit less gung-ho and a bit more, you know... Ex- uh, sort of realism of, of an apocalypse situation and it just turned out to be a crap game so as far as the trailer goes uh, yeah it looks like a really good game but we'll have to wait and see we've also seen this week uh, that huge complicated control system you can buy for Hawken the game we discussed last week the mech one where you can basically have sort of all the controls for it and you can also plug in like an iPad as your screen for it, because it runs on like iPad and such things. It's browser based. It looked very expensive and complicated. I can't Over imagine many people are going to buy it. I think you may as well just buy your own mech. Yeah. I don't know. People buy like game um, game pads, fight games. Well, I guess joystick. Pe- I'd probably buy a steering wheel if I actually got around to buying a decent well, yeah, racing game. I guess if, if racing games are your thing, you'd buy a steering wheel. If mm. arcade fighters were your game, you'd buy those big arcade style pads and. If mech games are your thing, you'd buy a, you know, a big mech console. Maybe more on the Japan, 
Japan and China and Asian markets. Sort of otaku like type people it. who would go absolutely fanatical over something. Well, Maybe. yeah, that's where the Met games were really, really but, big. I mean, looking at the Asia. comments of a lot of these websites that was showing the controller, people seem to be really quite enthusiastic about it. There I'm just going to go have a look at it. There weren't so many people who were like, oh, this is just a massive waste of money. There's a lot of people who seem genuinely happy to throw their money at it. Mm. So, you never know. I mean, I get you could really wow, just... Wow, I want it. It looks <laughs> amazing. It it's does got look a good. It's switch that you have to flick up to do shooty stuff in the middle of the co- uh, panel. <laughs> like the little safety cap on a button so you don't end up shooting everyone. That is amazing. I want that on, like, my car. <laughs> switch that just I can drive your car using that. Or on my computer, everywhere. They need the little red safety yeah. switches that you get on fire jets firing missiles. What? No, what you need are those switches where you put the key in, turn the key, and then the button lights up, and you push the button. Yeah. That's that what too. we need. For the ignition, that'd be great. Just You've got to have two keys. Okay. Like, yeah, two keys. up in the middle of the d- dashboard. You've got to whack it. it ign- does the ignition on the car. So $250, that's a bargain. How much is it? $250, rumoured. For, US is, for what is essentially an entire console of, of buttons and things, that's pretty good. I mean, if all I, them buttons work, it'd be amazing. Well, they'll all be You'd assignable. Have to to, You'd have to be a pilot to be able to operate it mm, well, I'd imagine. They'll all be a, a completely assignable to different things. As, as to whether there are just that many options in the game, you'll never know. Oh, but, okay. I mean... You could always recreate it with two joysticks and a keyboard, but it wouldn't have the same feel, I guess. So people buy it for the feel. Yeah, and it looks good. It looks cool. If you'd set it sat like, in a room. Yeah. You could build like your own room around it. Well, we were discussing with, like, this. the five monitors. Yeah, we were, dis- we were discussing this earlier about people who, buy- who build like those little pods, and you can get in, and it's basically the interior of a car or the interior of a plane or something. Hmm. And I was thinking, how many people out there do you think when you climb in the pod and it's the interior of a truck and you've got two big 50-inch screens as the, as the front window and you climb in and it's just a cab and you turn it on and it's Euro Truck Simulator and you can go from, say, Dusseldorf to Paris in real time and just sit in your fake cab, pootering along. I don't think anyone would do that for a game that costs like £10. Well, it probably it probably costs like two pounds. Everyone's got everyone's got their fanatics. It True, wouldn't... there must be someone who buys those games, other than like wives for their husbands, who's a lorry driver for a gift that they think they'll really enjoy. <laughs> I guess now you can drive even when you're not at work. Oh dear, Euro Truck Simulator Two now with more manoeuvring. At least Ten they're innovating. Points. Now with black ice. Real life jackknife physics. Yeah, it's the kind of innovation we like. Yeah, I had a bit of a look into how Hawken was developed and stuff, and it's a kind of it says pseudo indie developer because it was started off in a garage, just some people making it without any funding or anything. But they're all kind of like pro people, people who've who been made involved in other games, games and stuff before, and thought, you know what, we could do this on our own and branched out. And then once they've kind of got a kind of working demo of it, they start started to try and get a company to actually develop it for them or whatever. And they've raised they had to raise ten million dollars. They got ten million dollars out of venture capitalists to pay for it all. Wow, two million dollars out of other people's redundancies. Ten basically. Million. Yeah, ten, ten million. Ten million dollars out of other people's redundancy. Most of it came from... Because, um, I mean, let's face it, that's that... all venture capitalists do, is just buy a company, fire everyone, and then sell it on for a profit. Well, yeah. They, most of it came from the same people who invested in Riot Games mm. when they brought out LOL. Because they've seen a, uh, the, the free-to-play market is going to be It's an increasingly bigger. common story nowadays. Mm. I mean, before... Uh, you'd have, say, Activision say, right, well, we want to make a new shooter, and then a a dev company come along and say, we can do that for you. Or you'd have them say, go and make a pitch to them. Yeah. And then, based on the pitch, they get the money and then go make the game. And nowadays, and I'm not sure why, but it's probably to do with the rise of indie games, developers nowadays make the game at a loss themselves. They're paying to make the game. 
and then they go and say, here, here's a finished game, do you want to publish it? Mm. So, and... I mean, I'm not going to say it's necessarily a bad thing, because there's, you know, a huge investment on the part of these companies, because it's their own money going into making the game good. So they have to make it good for a publisher to pick it up. Yeah, it's a very small team. There's only like ten of them, or something. And three of them are students, who are currently gone back to their studies now. So we're... When you say gone back to their studies, do you mean these are like mature students, like forty-year-old people who've? I don't had think so. No. Crisis. I think kind of our. Oh, age. you sort of think they were students. They took a break to make the game, and now they're going back. Uh, that sort of thing, or they were students who they like. I don't know, computer games people, students who they kind of got to got involved mm. to on the project when it was being done to start with. And now it's, they've gone back to actually finish off the, <laughs> their studies and things at the moment. But it's a big market now, the free-to-play gaming, like um, LOL and such. Riot was bought by a Chinese company last year for $400 million. I can't remember what what, it, what the exact figure was, but Riot said, or released the figure that they make each, I think it was each month, and it was a huge amount Mm. Considering that you could play this game for absolutely nothing, there are people out there who are seriously willing to pay money for a free game. The market yeah, is really the out there. Stuff. Well, yeah, if there wasn't a market for it, they wouldn't bother doing it. Well, no, of course. Like, um, there is some MMOs that were pay to play, and then went free to play and made more money. Because mm. of all the microtransactions, people are like, oh, I'll spend four quid on this. Well, the monthly subscription... Months later, spend another two quid. The monthly just, subscription market's completely disappeared now. Even LOL... Oh, not LOL. Even WoW's wow. feeling, the, uh, feeling the pinch from that market disappearing. Well, Terra's just launched, and that's in pay monthly, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I give it about six months before it goes free to play. <laughs> mm. Or just well, disappears entirely. Isn't it a South Korean game, that anyway? And it's not really done very well in the Asian markets. And it's Which been out there quite a while. Normally, if it's a South Korean game, they'll just, they'll just lap it up. Yeah. Crytek announced that... Well, they're bringing out Warface, aren't they? Which is a free-to-play sh- FPS. Mm. So even some of the big studios are going more free-to-play. I know, yeah. maybe... Well, Maybe. because it's come out, it's now disrupting the, the standard models. It's just like... It needs to be both, though. Changing. You can't all go free-to-play. Yeah, play you need to have it. a good balance of both. Especially yeah. with these more sort of indie free-to-play games and these sort of web-based and mobile-based games. Because it's not that they're taking more of the market, they're just increasing the market. Their, their consumers are people who wouldn't have played video games otherwise. So it's not that the pay £50 for a game... Uh, is failing, it's just that the market has expanded to include a much broader range of people who are willing to pay different things. So you really yeah. do have to get the balance mm. right, and for, say, a blockbuster title, I can't imagine free-to-play working particularly no. well. You Part of the problem do it. is, though, is that gaming's one of the things that gets uh, cut back on in times of, when hard times, when money's tough, like now. The uh, video game sales... Like economy in this country has dropped by twelve percent since last year, and it's the third third year that it's dropped on consecutively since two thousand and eight, which is when it was at its highest. They're hoping that it's going to go back up again with the new gen consoles in a couple of years' time. It probably will. Yeah, it and it's the rise of such like iPad games and phone games and things. Although it's people more often people who wouldn't have played, I don't know, console games or PC games anyway. Yeah. The people are still there is a, still a movement towards that. People go, well, I could spend fifty quid on this game, or I could have you know, fifteen games for playing on my iPad. When yeah, I'm sat but on at, the train. S- at the same time, it's not a direct comparison because it's I could pay you know, retail price for a blockbuster shooting game, or I could pay I don't know fifty p for Angry Birds. Yeah, and they're not exactly the same game. Yeah, the problem is that the, yeah. The market share is dropping on like blockbuster games and stuff compared to say like uh, iPad apps and things. The amount that's being spent in on those is growing, where the other one is dropping. So they are gaining a market, a greater market share at the moment. Whether mm-hmm. that will change when the new gen consoles come out, I don't know. Hopefully, 
We'll see. There's not enough storytelling in blockbuster games, though, anymore. No. Oh, just too many short single player, or it's all about the graphics, and then there's no real story that you get gripped by. It's all about mm, the multiplayer but... that you're expected to be interested in and plumb, like, you know, I know, so many hundred hours into. Yeah, I want some. Never... I guess, like, Zelda probably was. I haven't played it yet, but I've got it. It's one of those games that's like 40 hours long. It's all about single player. It's got a massive story that mm. you get engrossed in. I want something Assassin's like that. Creed is another one. Seriously, yeah. it's been like I that. Mean, it's done very well Creed, because of it. Uncharted. Um... They're all things that were a departure from the sort of like first person shooter, just whip through it in sort of eight, ten hours or whatever and have done with it, just play the multiplayer. And they're doing much better for it, those kind of games. I don't, I'm hoping that I'll continue to move towards those. Obviously, you still need some kind of mindless FPSs, but. Some decent, <laughs> <laughs> decent games, storied games would be good as well. Again, I guess it's it's easier to make a multiplayer engine, a bunch of maps, a bunch of different weapons, and then push the game out. Whereas, again, creating you know, a story, an entire universe, uh, a series of levels, as opposed to just four or five maps, you know, creating all that is very time consuming. And I don't think people are necessarily going to want to start building something for the next consoles yet. But no. if they started, then what you're essentially doing is releasing a brand new packaged game for a, a console that just went out of date. So I think that's probably why people are holding back right now. Yes, yeah, so you're at the end of the development cycle. They're not going to be putting out any major new IP or anything. Yeah. For it. But even so, I think companies developers are starting to feel uh, the effect of what I mean, the move away was... from good, good gaming has had, that they are losing money, or w- what their big share was, and they're having to face the fact that they might have to go towards decent gaming again. It's well, that's why Kickstarter's stories. doing so well. Yeah. Because it's allowing, like, these developers new... who've got original ideas, yeah, these new where ideas publishers to have just told them to fuck off. Because they don't think he'll make any money. Whereas yeah. the community is saying, no, we actually want these games and we're going to put the money for it. And then the publishers are just obsolete. Yeah. Whereas the E3, they're trying to claw themselves back in and say, yeah, look at how good we are. And we're just like, no, those games suck. Well, I mean, an I- a good example of the complacency was the uh, an, an interview I was watching with one of the people who was making the next Gears of War game. And the question put to him was basically, well, why why make this game? And he goes... Well, we feel like we could fit another one in before the next consoles came out, which is basically saying, well, you know, we've got a bit of time left over. We don't want to work on anything big. We'll just bung something out there using an engine we already have, which is essentially what it's going to be. A very similar multiplayer experience, probably a fairly short story compared to the other Gears. That'd be fine as if they if it was out at a knockdown price. To re- like. Which is probably not going to be. No, it's not going to be. But if they brought that out, if they kind of freely admitted that and said, yeah, it was just kind of an interim game, we're going to price it at £20, say. People right. might go, well, okay, yeah, we understand that you're not going to make an amazing new thing for because it's, this mean, console's on its way out and the new ones are going to be in in a year or two's time. Well, I mean, if you justify it like that, then every single Call of Duty game since the first Modern Warfare would have to be at £20 because they have... They have, only have like a two-year dev cycle, and they release one every year. The only way they can release one every year is if they have two companies who alternate the publishing. So, mm. you know, they have an amazingly short dev cycle, and they keep bunging them out there and keep charging full price for them. I've got a better idea than E3. If E3 sucks again next year, just do a Kickstarter expo where all the big games that have been successful on Kickstarter can show all their stuff. Yeah, well, so at least really they're interesting games that people want. I don't want fucking Need for Speed Most Wanted, which just looks like Burnout with real cars. But if you did a Kickstarter expo, it wouldn't be a Kickstarter expo based on games. It would be a Kickstarter expo based on Kickstarters. No, so just also, games from Kickstarter. Not think... like anything that's been on Kickstarter. But you I could do anything that's been on Kickstarter. That would be quite good as well, the films. Well, I mean, if you wanted Kickstarter to run it and invite lots of big investment type people then it'd have to be on everything because i really don't think sort of the indie game market is big enough to attract enough people to open a big venue and get lots of high-paying people in there start a kickstarter for it 
Yeah, start a Kickstarter. We, for can't, it, start a Kickstarter. we can't start a Kickstarter. Brilliant idea. We can't start a Kickstarter because we're of the of the wrong nationality. I'm sure we can contact somebody in America. We shouldn't have to. Kickstarter just shouldn't be so racist. It's not racist. It's xenophobic, probably. Rather than <laughs> yes, there we go. Fine, I won't. I won't libel Kickstarter by saying they're racist. I'll libel them by saying they're xenophobic. <laughs> oh, it's probably just legal issues or something. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> Has Jamie gone? I can't hear him. I'm Jamie sure. was having a drink. Oh, uh, he went really quiet all of a sudden. It was nice. Wow, really? Well, so, you can rag on me, I can rag on you. So what was your least favourite aspect of East 3? Nintendo Land. Really? Mine was probably the Wonder Book. Oh, it was, it was pretty close. I <laughs> that was an abomination. Of What's terror. the Wonder Book? Well, uh, looking on Unless our... Br- they do erotic fiction for it. Then I'm buying one. No. We've, uh, on my briefing notes here, I've got Wonder Book, and then in a bullet point, a newfound method of torture. And I wrote best thing at E3. JK, JK. It's at the bottom of page one. What is it? Essentially, you know the PlayStation Eye and the PlayStation yeah. Move? Well, you hook them up and you have this book. And the okay. pages are blank. Well, I say the pages are blank. The pages got like these little audio or this visual markers on them. So the oh, if you look on the screen, there's something. So if you look on the, the screen, there's something on the book, and you can turn the pages of the book, and you can use the PlayStation Move to interact with the book. Uh, okay. it's... Remember, um, there was the pet thing that you could get. Yeah, I know what you there mean. There was also that card game thing that you, as well, and you could buy toys or something. You put them in front of the camera, and they then you could interact with yeah, them. And they jump yeah. to life. It's like that, but with books. Oh, and the first one is being written by J.K. Rowling or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you could do spells or something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you could tell how enthusiastic she was about the project, because she couldn't be there in person. But instead of recording one of these, sorry, I couldn't be here type videos, she just sent an email. She just sent an email and I put it up on the screen. So you can well, tell that it's something, it's something she wrote over, you know, a weekend on a pretty miserable day when she couldn't sit in the garden and enjoy millions. Billions, even. Yeah. It's aimed at the kiddie winks, though, to be honest. Yeah, but, I mean, kids today, I really think they're not going to, they're not, this isn't going to hold their attention. They're probably going to think this is about as stupid as we think is stupid. Yeah, I mean, my four-year-old cousin came over at Christmas and he was playing Grand Theft Auto in my brother's room. He was terrible at it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Daddy, I'm claiming my money back off a hooker. <laughs> No, I just drove around getting killed all the time. Wow. That sounds like when Nosh plays any video game ever. Yeah, he's probably better than Nosh. <laughs> lies. All lies. <laughs> Somebody steal my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Wow. I misplaced it when I was... Steal the mouse you were using not three minutes ago. I, I guess we should first. really talk about the... Biggest thing at E3, um, the Nintendo Wii U. How was that they, the they biggest us. thing? They didn't announce any specs for it. They didn't anou- announce a price. They didn't announce a launch date. They didn't announce any new games outside of Pikmin 3 and Nintendo Land. Zombie U? Oh yeah, and Zombie U. Lego City? That's one, basically just one, Lego Island from the 1970s. No, 1997. Yep, I had that. I had I that. I played the shit out of that game. So, yeah, you're going to get a Nintendo I'm going Wii U, to... Nosh? If no. that game, if that Lego City game comes out and it's everything I'm expecting it to be, then I will buy that console just to play that game. And when I'm done with that game, I will put the console and the game on eBay a week later after buying it. It's the same thing as the Wii, but I think it's even less impressive. I think everyone was caught up in the Wii when they first saw it with the motion controls. I mean, I was. When I saw it, it's like, that is amazing. Pre-order. Well, the Wii Drop had... down the line. The Wii it had some... used the, after that. The Wii had some good games. The problem was that it didn't have enough good games, and it didn't have the power to keep up with the big multi-platform titles. Well, I don't yeah. think it was ever designed to, was it? No. That, that was the problem. It was never designed with the foresight to to cater to those games, which is a really silly move. Well, I think it was always aimed at people who weren't didn't play video games. 
It's not for your standard people who play card or heavy rain or any other kind of good game. That's what it was for people who wanted to do little sports things and fun things and dance around and do singing. There things. is some good serious games for the Wii. I just don't bother buying any games for it anymore. Mm. I mean, there are still good games out there. I just don't buy them. I mean, I, I've not plugged the Nintendo into the telly for. I don't know. But a long you, time. Did you notice that? The, the Wii U controller, I, th- I think we can all agree it's terrible. It's a terrible idea and it's too expensive and it's going to be just god-awful. But the other two consoles seem to uh, seem to actually be quite worried about it. Because well, when uh, my- at the Microsoft press conference they announced Smart Glass, where you can connect your Xbox to your tablet, and then they said, yeah, yeah. oh, it can also be used for games. And then they had like this, uh, I think it was Madden, or some sort of American football game, and it looked just like as if you were probably playing it on the Wii U or like mm. on the DS where the touchscreen would be used for something else. And I thought, yeah, this is clearly just a response to what was announced at last year's E3. And I think Sony had something very similar where they had connectivity between your smartphone and your computer and your Xbox and your bed. Mm. And Yeah. Some of the stuff I read was suggesting more that the, the smart glass stuff from it. Uh, Microsoft was more of a response to the threat of Apple and some. Oh yeah, that too. Opposed to Nintendo. That too. They are clearly trying to take the spot of Apple TV and iTunes and things like that. Mm. That's not a bad thing. Although saying that, I think I think it's yeah, it seems rather interesting because. I mean, what do you do on your tablet when you're watching telly? You sit there and you go on the Twitters and you do extra stuff, and this is kind of the same thing. So you're watching a TV show and you can tweet along, or you're you know, you're watching a TV show. The, the good example they gave from the Xbox conference was uh, if you're watching Game of Thrones and you look down on your tablet, it has a, a big map showing you where each scene is taking place in in sort of this world. Okay. So it's kind of like a good for people for probably not for us, but for people who lose track of these things fairly easily and don't know where one person is in relation to another, it's you know it seems an interesting way to keep track. Yeah, but they're gonna to have to get a lot of people on board to make that happen. For oh stuff. yeah, I think I think this this sort of deal is yeah you know, like a one-off they've struck just to get yeah that an example demo, out yeah. of what it can yeah. do. It could end up just being very gimmicky though. Well, to you, be honest, you mean I'm like you mean like the Connect and the PlayStation Move and the yeah. Wii U controller and the Wii controller. I wouldn't have said the Wii controller was gimmicky as such. That was kind of what it was sold on. You could. I kind of think. Of all it, the, I didn't think it ever lied about what its aims were of for the Wii. All, of all the things I've seen in recent years, including Kinect and the Wii U, Smart Glass is the least gimmicky thing I've seen. Because it seems to actually have some interesting uses that would make yeah. life easier. I mean, for example, you could be listening to music on your telly and you could control it from your tablet. You can do that anyway. Or... Uh, the guy who was showing off Internet Explorer for the Xbox, he was using it for a, a trackpad and a and a keyboard, like as if you were using a, a laptop, which is an awful lot easier than trying to surf the web on a controller. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that that is one good use, because, like you say, the PlayStation and the Xbox, if you're trying to use it for web browsing, they, well, the PlayStation is pretty terrible. Yeah. And I, I think that's, the a mar- that's a market they really want to break, because they want to turn TVs into smart TVs. But, eh, I don't really see the big fuss. It's like, wow, I can watch TV on the TV. Well, at the end I of the really day... I don't need to look down and do extra shit. At the end... I've got my phone for... That's what I do anyway. I'm always looking at my phone and doing extra shit when watching yeah, TV. Yeah, but I don't need some smart glass thing telling me extra stuff about the show. I'm looking at my phone because I want to go on Twitter yeah. or check my Facebook. Okay. Well, okay, imagine, imagine this. Imagine million pound drop. Mm-hmm. Imagine that, and the questions come up on your smartphone as you're going along. Yeah, but you can do that on your computer anyway. Well, you could anyway, but that requires you to be at your computer or to load up a web page or that sort well, of thing. Well, this makes you on have to have a laptop glass, or a tablet. Well, on Smart Glass, mm. it senses when you're watching the show and it brings it up on your tablet anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I guess could... for quiz shows where you want to play along, that's one use, but it depends how expensive it is because that's well, it's an it's not app. Worth it's a lot of money. It's an app, and, and the the interesting thing is, it's not just for Windows phones; it's also yeah, it's for iOS fun. and Android. Yeah. So if it's an app and it costs free or you know two ninety nine or something, I would try it out. I reckon it'd be one of the more expensive apps. 
Mm, personally, but, I mean, I can yeah, see if it's why cheap it enough and it's good. It could it. well, it could be that it's expense or that it's a free app, but then to unlock it on your Xbox, you've got to pay a bit extra, or you've got to have like Xbox Live Gold membership or something. Oh yeah, I forgot you need an Xbox to use it. Oh wait, up no, Xbox. There's a lot of things like um, Blu-rays. You can have like loads of extra stuff going on at the same time, or, or you're watching the film and things. Generally, if I'm watching a film or a television program, I want to watch the program. I'm not sat on my phone tweeting stuff. I'm not. Have you never to know gone? Doc- have you never gone on like those um, those films late at night, and every so often they have like a little pop up at the bottom of the screen? It has like a fun fact about the film you're watching, or some music channels do it, where it's like, "Did you know that Peter Andre fell over when he was recording this and ripped one of his pecs off, or something?" I kind of know what you mean. Yeah, it'd be like that, but on your phone. Wow. Yeah, but I don't sit looking at my phone or the computer generally while I'm watching something on the telly. You never tweet along when you're watching Big Brother? No, I don't watch Big Brother. That surprises me. You watch a lot of other useless shows. Just watch TV and your computer and then you can be on Twitter at the same time nice and easy. Mm. So I do question time and and sports. There was was something interesting, uh, now you mentioned sports on the Xbox, and it was only for like three seconds they displayed it, but I thought it was the best idea ever. Essentially, you could have two sports games running side by side on your screen, and you could use the Kinect to yell at your TV and switch between the uh, the audio from each one, and you could full screen each one or just have them both side by side. And I thought that's perfect for someone like Simon who watches like seventeen sports games at once. And then I yeah. thought, you know what? When they bring out Smart Glass, you could watch two on the screen, one on your tablet. Or you can watch as many as you want on the screen and then use the tablet like a switchboard and switch between different games and things. Hmm. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to have some terrible show like Soccer Saturday to help you keep track. It should have just been at some tech expo, though, this smart glass thing by the sounds of it, rather than a gaming expo. Yeah. So it's more tech oriented. But I guess the problem is they don't really have any other hardware to display at the moment, Microsoft no. or Sony. That Microsoft lights. want to own the living room, essentially, don't they? Well, they Sony want music, do they as want well. Films, yeah, they they want games. Because they're realising that people aren't just playing games, that they're using it for, like, love film, Netflix, mm. watching catch-up TV. So. And they and Xbox also announced an awful lot of uh, media partnerships, so you could get, like, all these different TV shows on the Xbox. And I was just sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, none of this is applicable to us. We're in the UK. We probably got the iPlayer and maybe 4OD, and that's it. Well, Netflix is already on Xbox. Well, and Netflix. Not that I'm paying for Netflix. And Love Film. It's supposed to be alright, is Netflix? I'd probably get it if I was in work. So it's like £6 a month. I know. I don't think I, I watch enough telly to justify £6 a month. It's not telly, though, it's films. The amount of stuff I, I download don't I anyway. Enough films anyway. Mm. I think the only reason I've watched a lot of films recently is because Nosh just kept going on about watching films. Have I? Have I really? Yes, yes, you have. You have really. I don't think nothing was happening if I don't say anything. <laughs> so, so is that E3 covered? Uh, Pretty much. Looking down. There's not really anything else that's interesting. Yeah, that's it, really. So it was a bit meh. We don't want Wii U's, and there was about five good games between the three of us that we thought were there. Yeah. Good stuff, E3. Good stuff. All in all, well, I'm kind of glad because we're all out of work. We don't have any job. We don't have any source of income currently. So to know that I don't have to spend four or five hundred quid on a new console and at least for another year, maybe another another year on top of that, is That's a good true. thing. And to know that in the next year I only have to buy, you know, four or five games that I'm interested in, and, you know, I can deal with that. Oh, one of my favourite parts of E3 was the fact that the majority of the games, well, all of the games demoed were being run on PCs, because well, the development games anyway. Yeah. But it was really obvious when they showed um, Crisis 3. Because <laughs> you were looking at the draw distance, there, it's like, Jesus Christ, that is a pretty game. Yeah. So, there's no way that it's going to look like that on the Xbox or PlayStation. <laughs> Well, the thing about Crisis 2 was it was... It, the Crisis, Crisis, the original Crisis, was designed with the PC in mind, and it wasn't really for any consoles, and it was amazing. And then for Crisis 2, they designed it specifically for consoles, and you could tell, because even on the PC, it was just really scaled back. 
in comparison. All right, so they made it worse. They essentially made the graphics you... worse and made it run worse on the PC because it was essentially a port. Yeah. It's a Crisis 3, I think they've gone back the other way around, so now they're, they're making an absolutely gorgeous PC game, and then for consoles it'll be scaled back appropriately. Yeah. But it does mean that a lot of these games will possibly be coming to PC, or the more likely. Well, most of them are, Mo- and most of the ones I'm interested in, like, um, like for, uh, not Fallout, Far Cry 3, Borderlands 2... Uh, I think it was... Well, Black Ops 2 definitely will. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Forza's on the PC as well. It's uh, never been on the PC before, as Forza. It's always been Xbox, hasn't it? Oh, fair enough. Tomb Raider's probably going to be on the PC. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if The Last of Us will be on the PC or not. Mm, it's Naughty PC. Dog, PlayStation only. The Lego, the Lego game's probably, probably going to be on all consoles. Oh, that was the thing about the Wii that sucked. All the third-party content. Yeah, it was essentially all stuff <laughs> that we already own, we've already played, we've already finished. And uh, then what will happen, well, I can see happening, is the third-party uh, publishers will go, but nothing sells under Wii U, so we're not going to make any more things for it. <laughs> yeah, because you gave out a load of shit that you can get on other consoles well, already. That was the problem with the original Wii. It was, yeah, it was. You know, we're not going to bother making a good game because nobody buys the terrible games we put on it anyway. Or the rehashes of mm. old games from the Xbox and PlayStation and 2. The, I think the problem with the Wii and the Wii U is they've fallen into this... Uh, there are half a step this, behind. Yeah, this trap of being a console that you actually have to scale back. Like, whenever they release a game that's also on Xbox and, and PS3, they release, like, a a different edition. Kind of like they do with the handheld games, where you have sort of, like, Call of Duty handheld edition, and it's just... It's a completely different game, made, made by a completely different person. It's just got the same label. Mm. And they do that for the Wii. They release a terrible version that's got... You know, it's got Wii controls on it, but it's just really naff. Yeah, and it's then been they... made by one of their junior teams. Yeah. Uh, development teams or and something. Else. the Wii seems to have fallen into that trap. And by looking at the Wii U, and, and especially the Batman game, where they, they've they re dug the controls to have different stuff in to use the Wii U console, but the graphics on that game looked so terrible compared to all the others. And I can imagine it's probably also a slower game, and you probably have less enemies on the screen just so the, the console can keep up. So I, I do think Nintendo has fallen into this trap of being half a step behind. Well, they can work it to their advantage as well because they get out the first to market. Mm. So if people buy it, because unlike uh, Microsoft and well, Sony, and, and Xbox, which make it do it as a loss leader, their consoles in the yeah. past, they don't want to do it in the future. Nintendo, they might not have the greatest uh, people playing their console at the moment, but the Wii made them so much money that oh, they yeah. can put in the bank. Oh, yeah. And... I, and the first person stuff that Nintendo makes in house has always been a big seller. Yeah, the first party stuff, yeah. And, um, but I mean, the Xbox, the 360 being the first to market, was a huge advantage to it. And it, it cut yeah. into the. Because coming out of the last generation, people thought the PS2 you know, sold an awful lot, the PS3 will be just the same. Xbox stepped in, and I'm pretty sure because they released a full year and a bit before everyone else, I'm pretty sure they gobbled up an awful lot of the market. Mm, and the cost of the PlayStation as well. Yeah. I remember, and Sony had this horrible press conference back in, I think it was 2005. It was absolutely terrible. I, I think there's probably still some like YouTube videos going around of just these highlight reels of just terrible, terrible uh, press conferences. And then the uh, the PlayStation no not no the Xbox guys and the Nintendo guys worked out that you could actually buy both consoles and have money to spare if you had the same amount to buy a PS3. So you may as well have just bought an Xbox and a Wii and had a bit of pocket money left over. Yeah, that was probably the way. I think probably quite a lot of people did that because mm. people liked the novelty of the Wii. Yeah. Well, I remember. A serious game. I remember when the Wii was first released. You couldn't get your hands on one. They were so so rare. Yeah, and got mine at launch, motherfuckers. Pre-ordered that <laughs> shit. I remember they so had... what to buy a launch Wii. I mean, like, it's quite limited. I don't well, know if it says launch Wii. Works. Like. You, they should well, totally put, the like, launch on it. If like, you get them like at launch, so they're worth more money. Stuff. Like, like, yeah. like the first print run of a book. Yeah, so you yeah. can sell them for more money, because I'd totally sell mine. And I remember there was a... Um, there was a supply problem with the PS3 as well, but that wasn't because people were buying it, it was because it took them forever and a day to make the Blu-ray players. Yeah, so they the just couldn't get them out the door fast uh, enough. Blue diode or something, wasn't it? Hmm. 
the little blue laser. Yeah, mine's an original PS3. Yeah, my brother's is as well. Optics. Mine is oh, not an original wild. Xbox. I think mine must be. I think the third Xbox we've had now because the other two have just red ringed. I've got my launch PlayStation Two at home. I play that more than the motherfucking Wii. <laughs> at least it works with a DVD player. Mm. No, I had to buy a Slim because my first PS2 broke after about four years. <laughs> oh, the warranty is fine on mine because mine did break. Well, it didn't break. The laser just needed cleaning, so I had to take it all to pieces to just wipe a bit of dust off the lens. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked fine. It's not been any problem since. But yeah, it's worth keeping just for um, time splitters. Isn't that right, Nosh? Best game ever. Best first person shooter in the world. Yeah, Nosh loves that game. It's terrible. <laughs> Maybe if I played it a bit more, I'd get that. See, that needs to go on Kickstarter, because the option time split's for, but the publishers turned it down. Mm. And then they just I, essentially However much it's it. worth, I will enter the lottery until I win to give them the money to make the game. To be fair, the chances you have of winning the lottery, you may as well have just given them all the money you spent on trying to win the lottery. Okay, okay. So I just go to their Kickstarter, give them a pound every week, <laughs> until until the Kickstarter's finished, keep giving them a pound. They'll get that eventually. Mm. No, if if you put Time Splitters Four on Kickstarter, it would. I imagine it would go pretty quickly as well. Because again. some people, Nosh, appreciate good games when they see them. <laughs> Mister Black Ops Two. Once I've played it, I'll be able to tell you whether it's a good game or not. Oh dear! <laughs> Did you ever play the original Lego Island, Nosh? No, nope, never even heard of it. Oh, I missed out. I wonder <laughs> if I still have that CD. I do a playthrough of Lego Island, and it would just be glitchy, and it would be like six forty by four eighty. See if it's in a GOG. I'll put request in for it if it's not. I doubt it is, to be honest, because there's quite a lot of good games out on there. Let's so have a look at like, GOG. Lego Highlands on there. Lego Island. This is. So while well, uh, James no games for... found. <laughs> surprise, I can, surprise. I can I can play Space Rangers Two DRM free for nine ninety nine though. I don't want to. Hmm. I don't care that it's DRM free either. So what's everyone been playing this week? We usually have this bit at the beginning, but we've only just got through E3. <laughs> it's been an hour already. Uh, yeah, Nosh, what have you been playing this week? That mm, isn't LOL. LOL, it's pretty much the only thing I can think of offhand. Uh, fair enough. Oh no, I played some Mass Effect with yeah, Jamie. Yeah, a couple of days ago you played some Mass Effect. Uh, we'll probably do some again at some point, like tomorrow. Yeah, might even try and get some LOL up at some point. Too. Yeah, we keep meaning to do that. Uh, I also played some Sanctum with Simon. Yay! And... We were terrible at that oh, game. Oh, god awful. I think we need to take some time playing it. I've not actually watched any of the footage to see what that game's about yet. I, uh, not if surprised. you think of um, Orcs Must Die, mm-hmm. but it's first person instead and it's set in the future. Okay. So you've got traps and you've got we- weapons. Yeah, you have to and keep you've got some traps and then you use. shoot people. We were we really didn't put much thought into it when we were we doing it. Sucked balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a lot of your gaming, really. Wow, wow! You shouldn't have cut man deep. Um, what have I been playing uh, other than stuff I've recorded? I also played a bit of Castle Crashers with Nosh the other day. Oh yeah, that's a good game, and I think it'd probably be even better if I was hammered. Well, that's what we're doing. Well, I, no, if no. I was. If I was hammered and I was playing with like four people and it was just utter mayhem on the screen, that's the sort of game I like playing. That's what I it, liked about Smash Brothers was that you could play it drunk. It was just mayhem. You didn't know what was going on. You were just tapping shit. And it was good fun. I think that's the plan for after this, isn't it? Mm. What about you, Simon? What have you played this week? I played the best game I've played all year. Which, when did Limbo come out? Oh, it was Limbo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think Limbo may have come out in 2010. Just have a quick check. Yeah, yeah, 2010. Finally got around to playing it because it was on the uh, Humble Indie Bundle, which everyone needs to go buy because it's amazing. And they've added three more games to it now, so you get in eight games for, I think, $7 and something. You're going to buy it, Nosh. Hmm? The- You're going to buy it. Buy what? The humble indie bundle. Maybe when I've got some money. What you don't have four pound fifty. <laughs> I don't have two pence to write, rub wow. together. <laughs> so yeah, they've added Super Meat Boy, 
Uh, Braid, I think. Oh, was that already on it? And I can't remember the other one. But I'm going to have a little... Uh, limbo. Back to Limbo first. Hey, Nosh, Nosh. Mm-hmm. You know that £17.90 pence you owe me? Yeah. Could I have that tomorrow morning? No. Well, I'll see you in court, motherfucker. <laughs> It cost you more than that. I don't care. Court. I don't care. I'm dragging you through the courts until I get my money back. Well, I'm pretty sure by the time you got it to court, I would have paid it. <laughs> Out of court settlement. Done. Anyway, Limbo. Amazing yes. game. Well worth playing through. It'll probably take you about two hours. Maybe I think, three. I think from what I've seen of it, I'd play along until like the first death, and then you probably just hear from like out the distance, Aah! And I'd, you'd never play it again. It's so much fun. I mean, there's no talk in it or anything, but it's really, really engrossing. The art style is so beautiful. And the buttons are the arrow keys and the control button. And the puzzles are so clever. And you think about how many games nowadays have all the try and make puzzles and stuff. And that game uses five buttons, and mm. it's just amazing. One thing, though, and this is a problem with the modern age, Playing like puzzle games back in like Windows ninety five PCs and stuff. Mm. When you got stuck, you got really fucking stuck. <laughs> now you just go and you, it's just too tempting when you're in a puzzle game when you get stuck for five ten minutes to go. Oh, I'll just go and look on YouTube. Yeah, but that's not we, really a problem with the game. That's a problem with you. No, I said it's a problem with modern design. It's not the game. Well, I don't just, do it. I, I wouldn't imagine Nosh does it. No. There's always the temptation, though, in puzzle games, just to look for the answer. Oh, I only looked at it for two of the chapters out of the 40, and it was, like, some towards the end. I and it was like, oh, my God, why I didn't, didn't I think of that? I didn't look at videos during Portal. I didn't look at videos during mm, uh, any time in a Minecraft playthrough got stuck. Although, to be fair, we usually... Did you get stuck in Minecraft? Well, during, like, an adventure map, although we usually just bash down the wall. Yeah, that's the <laughs> brute force in Minecraft. But, yeah, that game's well worth playing through. I'd say the puzzles are trickier than Paul. Well, I mean, I don't think you've seen some of the puzzles from the uh, community-made maps yet. No, I've not played that, that yet. Can be I mainly haven't else. played it because it's not co-op. <laughs> yeah, that really frustrated me, because they said, they said they'd have co-op, and then at release they didn't have co-op. And they keep saying they will have co-op, but I don't know when. And I want co-op. It's like when Minecraft for the 360 came out and they said it'll be cross-platform and it came out and it wasn't. And they keep saying it will be but I don't know when and I want I'm it not, now. I'm not really bothered about that being cross-platform. It means I can play with so many different people. <laughs> like people whose laptops would die if they opened Minecraft. Like Jesus. Or yours. Mine works. Plays Minecraft fine. Is this it works in the same way that you said Terror works? And it was running about three frames a second. It worked. <laughs> Terror worked. Not very well, but it It wasn't worked. playable, but it worked. I played for about half an hour. I can't believe you, you got that yeah, far into it. Yeah, you played for it. about half an hour through the first five minutes of the game. It's not first five minutes. It was the first five minutes. I was done with that, with that tutorial after about 20 minutes. <laughs> His face <laughs> woke up. Dear God. I played a bit of Psychonauts the other day. That was a good game. That was on the Humble Indie Bundle. I've just been working through the Humble Indie Bundle already. I'm this recording week. none of it. Well, Limbo's not much point in recording. Psychonauts. I just thought it's a nice game to play. I don't really want to record it. It takes the enjoyment out of it sometimes. For some games. Especially when Psychonauts has lots of finding stuff as options and I just decide to spend half an hour searching for all the crap. <laughs> Um, I'm going to play Super Meat Boy at some point. And I did try playing Midnight Club 2, but I realised you can't play it with the Xbox 360 wireless controller. So, it's like, no, I'm not using the keyboard to do a driving game. <laughs> <laughs> Uninstall. I think you should play uh, Club Penguin. Club Penguin? Yeah, I think you should play Club Penguin. It seems like your sort of skill level. What, what do you have to do in that? Uh, you're a penguin, and you're in this club where there are other penguins. And it's made by Disney. Yeah. And, you know, it's big. It's big, in, it's big in the Americas. It's big in the American market. Nosh, yeah. we are culinary geniuses. 
Are yeah. we not? We are amazing. They laughed at us. They said it wouldn't work. We proved them wrong. What did Nosh do to help? He stood there and watched. Okay. I stirred. <laughs> <laughs> Asked poignant questions. Measured out the milk and the water. Most, mostly, when is it done? Can we put it in yet? Can I eat it now? I made the macaroni bit. But yeah, we took from our hands air and the basic elements of the world and we crafted a masterpiece. Macaroni and cheese pies have been invented, ladies and gentlemen. They were amazing. They, they were amazing. So just spelt my beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an embarrassment. Now everybody will see. It fizzed up and I wasn't looking. I was meant to put him out. <laughs> well, Sorry at least you discreet. have a beard. At least you have a beard to soak it all up so none of it hit the carpet. Yeah. Yeah, they're all right, your mac and cheese pies. All they're right. All right. Tasty. Yeah, all right. It's quite a compliment. They I'm tasted. Not. They tasted like the Virgin Mary's coochie woochie. They were amazing. Maybe a bit over. The I top. would eat that shit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner until the day I died. And if I ate that shit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the day I died would probably be two weeks from when I started. <laughs> <laughs> they look like honeycomb as well, because all the macaroni had aligned itself inside the pie. Yeah, that made no sense. That blew my mind. You cut it open, and all the macaroni is in a is in a row. And it's like, how? Why is there not one bit that's sideways? <laughs> Magic. It was amazing. Could really go for one of them, actually. A bit like yesterday when we were watching Lord of the Rings, just making comments about KFC the entire way through. Worst director's commentary ever. <laughs> It's amazing how much KFC came into that film, really. Yeah, the second one. It's mostly one. just crude innuendo on your part and my part. It was. It wasn't the extended edition, really, was it? It was the innuendo edition that we <laughs> made it into. I don't know how you can complain at me, Jamie. You just took a word from every sentence and just like <laughs> stressed that word and well, looked for a high five. You got what I meant, though, didn't you? You got what I meant. I don't think a. I think pretty much anything could have got what you meant. <laughs> well, I, you know what? If you don't shut up, I'll you what got meant. So, do you think the Hornet has left the toilet yet? I don't know, because I, I could do it going. I really I'll could. go have a look. No, 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 no. I don't want to risk it. And we're in the middle of a podcast. I think we're at the end of a podcast. Let's but, yeah, well, I haven't told the story about the Hornet yet. Okay. But yeah, basically, about an hour and a half ago, I went to go use the loo, and I, t- I went in, closed the door, and I thought, has someone got a leaf strimmer on? Has someone mowing their lawn at, like, ten in the evening? And I turned around, and there was this big orange flying thing. And I, I moved, I moved like I don't think I've ever moved in my life out that door. I ran. Yeah, you did look like you were on the verge of a heart attack. When I was. I, I was. I have never seen a hornet that big before in my life. I think that must be a queen. Especially because yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all orange. And all the pictures I've looked at, the queens are all orange. All orange. And then Nosh didn't believe me. He didn't believe me at all. And he went to go to the toilet just before we were about to start. And you could just hear him just going, Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's pretty big. It was terrible. If I hadn't noticed it when I did... And I started using the loo. I wouldn't have been able to escape. I, that or I would have just run out and would have to get a new carpet. You might have just finished a lot quicker. I, oh, I don't know what I would Suddenly have done. Suddenly evacuated. I, I probably would have just let down the toilet to escape from that thing. It was fucking scary. Are they naturally violent, though? Oh, no. They're the exact opposite of violent. They're actually scared of people. Probably also, what the fuck have we been scared for the past it's few hours? I thought they were, like, attacking us. It's big. So is it a dog? But dogs have fluff. I'm sure that does somewhere. They have teeth. Hornets have stingy things. You don't get stung by dogs. Get tetanus. That and hornets have more legs than dogs. Ergo, the scarier. Mm, I'd be scared of a one one legged psychopath than a hornet. Well, I'd just push him over. 
He clearly got very bad balance. If he's got Could one have. leg, they might have very good balance. Might have had that disability for a long time. Just... Well adjusted. Unlike you. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah, I'm desperate for Lou now. I shall go and investigate. <laughs> Let us know. All right. If I don't come back, so, um, whatever you do, don't let it into the rest of the house. I'll try not to. Okay. Best of luck. Godspeed. Godspeed, my young friend. He is so going to die. Yeah, he's already Wishful dead. Wishful thinking. He's dead. He's going to be dead. I'm just waiting for the scream. No. It's like a bug's life party in there. It's a what? Bug's life party. Is is it is it still in there? It's gotten worse. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just spray a load of air fresher in there. Wait, 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 Nosh, cut, Nosh, come back to your microphone. Ah, my shoe. <laughs> I think he hurt himself in the shoe. I hurt my shoe. What a twat. Right, Nosh, tell us what you were shouting from the landing. It's like a bug's life party in there. There's like moths, and there's that giant hornet, and it's full of flies. <laughs> oh my god. You know, it's the light, they're all attracted to the light, because the window's really open. The hornet isn't attracted in. to the light. The hornet was in there before I turned the light on. Do you know what it's doing? What? It's building an army. It's raising an army, it's going to take over the house. It can't crawl under the door, but its army can crawl under the door, and it can crawl under our doors. Yeah, we might have to find other toilet facilities. <laughs> just spray something in there. You can't kill it! You No, just spray some like, air freshener in. That'll piss it off, and it'll go out the window. The air freshener's in the bathroom. No, we've got one downstairs as well. It's the rose-centred one that we bought last year that smells like old people. <laughs> well, that... <laughs> wow. The last thing I want to do is piss off anything the size of my clenched fist. It's not that big. It's bigger than you thought it was. It'll be fine. It's still in there. It's been two and a half hours. It'll be fine. We'll sort it. And it's Saturday, so Asda's closed. So that's that's out of the question for a toilet option. LRC? It's a bit far for a toilet, isn't it? Yeah, LRC. Bushes in the garden. Bath. Yeah, that's not a bad option. Can't do a number two in the bath. As long as you, like, shower it down. <laughs> Depends how runny it is. Well, it's not like yours, so I don't think you can down. just shower it down. As long as you go over the plug and then poke if it you with po- a... If you poke it with a spoon, it'll probably give you the exact same reaction as if you went to poke that hornet with a spoon. Oh, I thought we were poking poop with a spoon. <laughs> yes. But it would give the same reaction as if you poked that hornet with a spoon. It would just be a very unpleasant experience for everyone concerned. So, you. I don't think poos have experiences. I don't want to... I, I'm not poking I'm a poo with a spoon. I'm not poking a hornet with a spoon. I'm not poking anything. I don't even have a spoon. And I refuse to leave my room to find a spoon because there's a big fucking hornet in the house. Ugh. I remember when my life was simple. I remember when it was simple and there was no big bug in the loo waiting to rape me when I get the trousers down. <laughs> I think you're overestimating the abilities of this big orange thing. We've gone slightly off topic, I feel. I'm going to the loo. Stuff the hornet. <laughs> I wish you just put a microphone outside the bathroom door and just hear it. Try and sh- Oh, he's gone now. I was going to say try and shoot it out the window if he's going in there anyway. Um, Fiverr says he just has a Wii in the sink. So we we kind of have some channel news. We had our first video to get over a thousand views the other yeah, day. Yeah, we don't know how it happened. Well, we do because we looked at the um, analytics. It was on some Russian, European version Ru- of Facebook. It's not, even, it's not even European. It's Russian and Ukrainian because it comes in three languages. It doesn't do like Facebook does in German and French. It just does English, Russian, and Ukrainian. Yeah, we and then Nosh goes of our views from Russia and Nosh, Ukraine. Nosh goes, how can you tell those words say Russian and cu- Ukrainian? And I was like, because they look like it. And they go, no, they don't. I put them in Google. And what did they say? They said Russian and Ukrainian. But yeah, thank you to everyone who watched it, by the way. Yeah. 
And they, they, they didn't all click off after like the first 30 seconds either. They were stuck around. Despite the fact it was actually quite an uninteresting episode. Yeah, we did watch it for it was like, why are so many people watching this? And um, it was before we had the detailed results of knowing it was on this VK.com, that was it. I was like, watched it for it was like, this isn't a particularly enthralling episode, <laughs> even if we do say so ourselves. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, that, that was good. And it's... It's basically now the end of Hardly a Podcast, episode 13. 13, the unlucky the unlucky episode. And none of us have died. Nosh has just come back. He doesn't look very dead. Are you dead, Nosh? No. Nope. Can you get rid of it? I solved the problem by leaving the bathroom door open. Oh, you... What, did you did you use the bathroom with the door open? No, no, no. So, I left it open after I finished. Was it Why? in there while you were using the loo? Yes. Why did you leave the bathroom door? Why did you go with it in there? So it'd go. It would like fly off somewhere else. You can use the bathroom. But now I can't use the rest of the house because it could be anywhere at any time. It's now it's like an electron. It's the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. I, I don't know funny. what the fuck's going on. Simon's run away in a panic. He doesn't know what's going on. He's just, <laughs> he's just closed the bathroom door. Consider yourself lucky that that door wasn't actually open. It was just slightly ajar. There wasn't even enough space for, like, a cockroach to get through. Because if it was open, I was going to walk straight through and punch you square in the head. (laughs) (laughs) You know how we were going to go play Castle Crashers now? Consider that, that, that plan changed. I think we've only got about seven more episodes of Terror to go up. Before um, the beta ran out, and we haven't bothered buying the game. Well, we made we made it last for a while. I'll give it that because I even remember playing that game. Well, the game came came out officially a month ago. Yeah. Mm. So we gave it a good streak, good publicity streak. It's good. It's good. Uh, what else have we had go up? We've had a bunch of winter watch out still go up. I don't know how many episodes of that we still have to go up. A shit ton. Shit ton, wow. So, by the time we get to recording some more, we're not going to know where we are or what we're doing. Uh, we had some Mass Effect go up, I still got to record some more of that. Had some Sanctum go up, and we still got to record some of that. I think maybe some Nosh Plays Retro Games went up. Quite fast there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Nosh is doing with that. Uh... I think that was about it, really. But, well, we still got a lot up. So, we're just going to keep ploughing on. I have a couple more episodes of Sanctum, a couple more episodes of Mass Effect. Uh, may start something else. May not start something else. Yeah, if I play anything, it'll probably be um, another indie game. I don't, I'm not really bothered about playing AAA titles anymore. I'm just like, I'd rather just play something interesting and where I actually get hooked in on the story and... Rather than just some mindless shit. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Um, I think it's about it, really. Yeah. I think we're basically done. <laughs> Do anything to add, Nosh? No, I think we've covered it all. all right, go oh. for a piss. Uh, I'm going to go beat Nosh to within an inch of his life, and then Simon can beat him an inch. I'll leave the web... Oh, wait, Nosh can just turn his webcam off. <laughs> like, we'll leave the webcams on. That was a uh, intro. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Yeah. Bye, Nosh. Thanks I'll for I'll wave listening. at you, because like, I'll uh, wave at Jamie. We'll be back next know. week. Uh, bye, Jamie. Bye. I'm waving. I'm waving, even though no one can see me. So, bye. Bye. See you next time.